Hi guys. Any good running training program is going to include runs at different intensities, from long slow distance runs and recovery runs, up through tempo runs and on to things like hill sprints and fast intervals. They come with a variety of different names, but the idea is basically the same. Include a variety of runs at different intensities that will target different physiological systems in order that we can put it all together on race day. We use training zones to help us target these different intensities with different workouts. So zone one runs would be something like a recovery run. Zone two runs would be like endurance runs or long slow distance runs. Tempo runs would be zone three. Long intervals will be zone four. And things like hill sprints and sprint intervals, they will be zone five. The question is, how do you know how hard to go in these different types of workout? Well, you need to have your running heart rate zones and your running pace zones specifically calibrated to you. In order to do that, you're going to need to do regular field tests. This will help you determine your own specific heart rate and pace zones for running workouts. And that will help you make sure that you're executing the workouts correctly in your training and getting the most out of your training program. So in this episode, I'll be outlining three field tests that you can use to help calibrate your training zones and track your running fitness. Hi guys, welcome back to the Adaptive Zone podcast. My name is Matthew Boyd. I'm a physiotherapist and running coach. If you enjoy the episode, please like and subscribe. And if you're so inclined, share it with a friend. Today, we're going to be learning three field tests that we can use to help track the effectiveness of our training and calibrate our training zones. Firstly, the 20 minute test will help us estimate your second lactate threshold, also known as LT2. We'll determine your heart rate and pace at LT2, and this will help us calibrate your training zones. Repeating this test every four to eight weeks will help make sure that your training zones are accurately calibrated throughout the season, and it will also help you track your race pace fitness gains. The 40 minute test will help us estimate your first lactate threshold pace, also known as LT1. Repeating this test every four to eight weeks will help us determine the effectiveness of your training at improving your aerobic pace. Finally, the five minute test will help us estimate your VO2 max pace. Repeating this test every four to eight weeks will help us determine the effectiveness of your training at improving your top end speed. In the module on running heart rate zones, we identified a few key physiological markers that we can use to help orientate ourselves whatever training zone system we're using. VO2 max is the intensity at which we're using as much oxygen as we're actually able to use. LT2, the second lactate threshold, is the intensity at which lactate starts to spike rapidly in the blood. LT1 is the first lactate threshold, the upper limit of our aerobic base and the first noticeable increase in respiration. 56% of VO2 max is the lowest intensity at which we can experience any aerobic conditioning. The following three field tests will help us determine our pace and heart rate at LT1, LT2 and VO2 max. We can take the results from these three field tests and just drop them into my training zone calculator spreadsheet in order to determine our training zones. If you caught the episode on lactate threshold, you'll know that the pace that you can sustain for about one hour would be pretty close to your lactate threshold pace. Now, if you're wearing a heart rate monitor while you run for that hour, you can look back at your average heart rate during that hour and that would be pretty close to your lactate threshold heart rate. Sustaining your max effort for 60 minutes is extremely hard. Just psychologically, trying to go that hard for 60 minutes is really difficult and chances are you're gonna slow down. That's gonna introduce a little bit of error into the test. Happily, there is an easier test. A 20 minute time trial would give you a pace that was just a little bit faster than your 60 minute time trial pace. In fact, it's somewhere around 95% of that pace. So if we do a 20 minute time trial and then just reduce the pace by 5%, then we'll have a pretty good estimate of our lactate threshold pace. We can do the exact same thing with the average heart rate, just reduce it by 5% and we'll be in the right ballpark for our lactate threshold heart rate. Here's how you do it. You'll need a GPS watch or a phone app that can track your pace and heart rate. You're gonna use a chest heart rate strap because if you use the one on the back of your watch, you're gonna get potentially inaccurate data about your heart rate. We want a flat route. So run beside a river, run around a lake, around an outdoor track, something like that. I'd avoid using an indoor track because the GPS watch is probably gonna give you slightly inaccurate data. You need to warm up for about 10 to 15 minutes. Don't start your watch or the tracking app on your phone just yet. 
Include some strides at a slightly higher intensity so that when it's time to go, you're ready to go hard. When you're ready, hit the start button on your watch or on the app and start going as fast as you think you can sustain for 20 minutes. It's got to be really hard. Imagine you're in a race. The 20 minutes has got to feel like absolutely brutal. I always tell people it's got to feel like the worst 20 minutes of your week. When you're finished, take note of your average heart rate and average pace during that 20 minute time trial. You're going to take those values and reduce them both by 5% to get your lactate threshold heart rate and your lactate threshold pace. If you want to make it a little easier, there's a link in the description to my training zone calculator and you can just enter the results in there. You now know your lactate threshold heart rate and pace. I'd recommend repeating that 20 minute test every four to eight weeks. You should see your average pace on that 20 minute time trial improve during the course of your training. This is a good indication of your race pace. The 20 minute test determines your second lactate threshold, also known as LT2. The 40 minute test determines your pace at the first lactate threshold, also known as LT1. Your LT1 heart rate is 95% of your LT2 heart rate. You can get those numbers from my spreadsheet by just looking at the top of zone two, the highest heart rate in zone two, or you can work it out yourself. Take your LT2 heart rate and multiply it by 0.95. For example, if your LT2 heart rate is 150, you would have an LT1 heart rate that is 143. That 143 LT1 heart rate is gonna be your target heart rate for the 40 minute test. After a warm up, you're gonna to start to increase your pace, keep an eye on your heart rate. You wanna get your heart rate to be pretty steady at that target heart rate, which was 143 in the example, but it will be whatever was your LT1 heart rate. Then you're gonna hit the start button on your tracking app or on your watch and try and hold that exact same heart rate or something very close to it for the duration of the 40 minute test. Then stop, have a look at your average pace during that 40 minute test, and that's your LT1 pace. The 40 minute test helps tell us what pace you can sustain using primarily your oxidative system. Repeating this test every four to eight weeks would help us assess the effectiveness of your training at improving your aerobic base. Okay, finally, the VO2 max test. This is the five minute test. You need to do a good warm up and make sure you're fully ready because this is gonna be an extremely hard five minutes. Once you've warmed up and you feel like you're really ready to go, you're gonna hit the start button and go as hard as you can. Really, really, really push. If the other test was the worst 20 minutes of the week, this is the worst five. By the end of the test, you should be really, really struggling. Once you hit that five minute mark, you're gonna hit the stop button. Your average pace during that five minutes is a reasonable approximation of your VO2 max pace. Reevaluating this test every four to eight weeks would help you get a good idea of how effective your training is at improving your top end speed. Using these three field tests regularly throughout your training cycle is gonna allow you to do two things. Number one, that 20 minute test is gonna help make sure that your training zones are always specifically calibrated to you so you can execute the workouts in your training plan correctly. The second thing that those field tests are gonna allow you to do is to track the effectiveness of your training at improving different aspects of your physiology. So for example, you're repeating that VO2 max test, the five minute test regularly, and it's not changing. You know that your training is not being very effective at improving your top end speed, and you can potentially adjust your training accordingly. Similarly, if you're repeating that 40 minute test, the LT1 pace test, and you don't see that average pace improving, you know that your training is not adequately expanding your aerobic base. That might mean that you need to slow down on some of your longer runs, or maybe you need to include some more volume. What you do with this information is ultimately up to you and your coach potentially, but repeating these three field tests regularly will give you a good indication of how well your training is working and whether you can expect to perform well on race day. Thanks for watching guys. That video was part of my Running Fundamentals course, which is a free online course, and you can check out the next video in the series right here. You can also sign up to receive the entire course delivered to your inbox. Just click the link in the description.